It's late May and my native plant garden is starting to really pop for the year. So I wanted to just go around and show a few of the plants that we have here, show the wildlife that enjoys using them, and basically just give you kind of an intro of the way that I'm doing the best I can to create a better space on this earth for people to live in and for animals and insects too. So here are a few blooms of our Oregon native camas. Just a little bit left at the top. They hit peak bloom in early May and it's late May now. They're surrounded by our native columbine, Alcolugia formosa. Beautiful. Um, perennial poppies. Definitely not native, but super awesome. And really brilliant after a uh, fairly dark and wet spring. We've got a little bit of permaculture style, trying to have some edibles interspersed. So we've got some artichoke plants. There are huge dinosaurs this year. Already artichokes ready to eat. These are checker mallows, close to some cool butterflies. We've got a few different kinds of checker mallows. I think this one is the rosy. And back there, this more bushy looking one is a meadow checker Oh, I believe not quite ready to bloom yet. It'll make um, very pale pink flowers and a super tall spike. There's another one like that. And some more rosy checker mallows. I've got a couple of Q6 checker mallows in here that um, I randomly ended up with. And I'm not so great at plant identification to know which is which. Here's the camas again. And it's going to be making seeds soon. I've heard camas is really hard to grow from seed. And I have tried and failed so far, but I'm going to succeed. I always just scatter the seeds around. Here's my weedy bed of lemon balm that I need to weed and some um, weedy geranium. We do have some nice um, native yarrows hiding in there, though, so they'll be gorgeous once I free them. And I know there's some milkweeds under there, too, so the, um, uh, bah, 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 bah. I forget which milkweed species. I've got a couple of milkweed species in there. Um, those kind of spiky looking ones, I think, are Colomia grandiflora. They make a really cool peach colored flower with um, blue pollen. Really beautiful. Oh, and this little. This is one of our native honeysuckles, Lonicera species. I think we have two or three. And this one, um, one of them's got red flowers and one's got pink. And there's a fuzzy one. There's a Lonicera hispidula. Um, this is a non-native, but I just love it. It's a um, ornamental elderberry. And it's a super dark eggplant purple and makes really pretty pale pink flowers, which you can see are going to be happening soon. This is one of my favorite little friends. Let's see if I can find one. Oh, these are still blooming. I call them star flower, but I'm not sure if that's the right name. I planted like three of these and they have um, spread themselves all over the place and they're very adorable. Um, and create this tiny little pink super cute flower that kind of they hold up above their leaves in an adorable way. Um, some Mahonia Oregon grape and these uh, have been eaten like crazy by probably leaf cutter bees. It's a native viola. You can see just a little remnant of a yellow flower. And these are one of my favorite man root. It's native. People try to get rid of it. There's my hand for scale. 
It's got big leaves when it's happy. And here I have a fern growing out of an old tree stump, which is always a fun thing to do with an old stump you have around. Um, and I've planted a few new little tiny creeping Ore Oregon grape. They'll look like nothing this year, but they'll start to grow a lot next year. Um, I'm forgetting the name off the top of my head. That's, I think, our native bachelor button. It makes little blue fuzzy flowers. Um, so, is this coral bells, our native coral bells? I think so. Like I say, not the greatest plant identifier. A thimbleberry. Super soft leaves. Can be used for toilet paper if you're out in the wilds of the Pacific Northwest and don't have any. It's very soft, won't hurt your bottom. Um, I also have some um, Clarkias, and I have a hard time identifying. I, I uh, love them. That might be one, um, although it might be the the one I told you about earlier with the peach-colored flowers, the Colomia. And uh, this down here, I'm pretty sure, is the Clarkia. Farewell to spring. And it makes all different, there's a native, that's what I've got planted here. It makes all different kinds of um, pink flowers that last all summer long and it's glorious. I've got two native iris varieties. Here's the one that makes a big wide plump and light purple flowers. So there's a Douglas iris and a, what's the other one called, Pacific iris? There's the one with the narrower leaves. Got a few of those. So fern. Oh, this is a um, fine maple. Mm. It's only about five feet tall at this point. It's a couple of years old. It's been kind of a slow grower, actually. I might not like this spot. It might be too sunny. There's some nice flowers, which the bees love. It's an Oregon native. Salal. More irises. More Salal. This will hopefully grow in. This whole um, bed here was buried by these three climbing roses. They were a mass, probably 10 feet by 10 feet. And um, all of this is when I cut these back, all of these plants under here emerged into sunlight for the first time in a long time. So they're slow getting started, but they'll be great. More iris. Um, Oh, I think that's false Solomon seal back there that's growing in the shade. I might have planted that there or I might have seeded. Um, lots of Oregon sunshine. Some of it's seeded from a wildflower seed packet that I got from Northwest Meadowscapes. It's a meadow um, seed pack. And I planted some Oregon sunshine and then some of it self-seeded. Uh, here's one of the greatest is this meadow foam native wildflower to the west coast. It's um, very loved by bees, bee loved, and forms itself into these adorable little mounds that just politely intersperses in your others. Here's a nice big mound of it. Lots of bees on there. It definitely um, brings brightness to your garden before uh, before the other things have started blooming. It's one of the first. It's just like a it's humming with activity on this sunny warm day. Somebody who's more of an entomologist could probably identify some of these bees. There's there are definitely many different species that like to come over here. Here's a really big bee. There's a little last, these are also one of the first. I have a native buttercup, it stands tall, it doesn't creep around, but creeping buttercup is the invasive one. This is the native, and it's quite adorable. And do 
provide some good nectar really early in the season, like as early as March here. Bring some sunshine. Out this patch of meadow bones buzzing. Tiny bees, hoverflies, large bees. We're going to start to see bumblebees now that it's getting so warm. The bumblebees love lupin. This is big leaf lupin. It's just blooming. He's just opened up this weekend. And here's a tall spike of the meadow checker mallow. That's seeded itself from somewhere else in the yard. The meadow foam stopover. This is a little baby cherry tree. Not native, but just fun. And over here is a big conglomeration of two or three different varieties of native daisy. They'll range from very pale uh, purple to a really bright purple little daisy shaped flower. Here we have bird's eyes. Gilia. Let's see if I can get it to focus on them because they have the coolest blue stamens with blue pollen. It's little, I think they're native to more southern parts of the coast. This here, if it makes it, is a Mexican sunflower. Not native to here, it's native to Mexico. However, it grows amazingly here and the hummingbirds go nuts over it and butterflies love it too. So it's such a good pollinator plant that I've left it. And more of the native daisies. They look kind of uninspiring, you know, this time of year. Got a few opium poppies here. They just showed up one year. I never planted those. Another little Mexican sunflower. It's been really cold and for them to grow. They don't like cool weather or rain, rainy cool weather, so hopefully they'll start to spring up. Nice patch of birds. They attract little tiny native bees. You can see they see them on the camera, but they're buzzing all around in there. We've got up here a, this is a manzanita, a native manzanita species. There's a couple of plants here that I picked up at the nursery from the sale rack here and here. They uh, were covered in bees at the nursery of all sorts. And even though I knew they weren't native, I couldn't resist them for the bargain. And I suppose just bring in pollinator plants that even if they're not native pollinators still love them. Yeah. Poppies. I love how poppies come in different shades. See them sewn around in all different shades. This one's my favorite. Some of this old world. These poppies for our wedding flowers. How many of these? That's a phacelia. I don't know which one. There's some blooming ones across the yard. I'll show you when we get over here. Seaside daisy. Native Tulum. Batch of chives that one of my friends gave me. Not native, of course, but edible and extremely loved. considered a weed, but they're pretty well behaved, easy to pull, and have super soft leaves. I've got some strawberries growing in there, not native strawberries, just uh, delicious ones. Um, this is the 
Central right now. Lavender. And a little thyme. This is a um, flowering thyme that I got from Annie's and it loves it here in my yard. Also, this lavender. This is Carnegie Central. I have a couple of neighbors with hives and they are always over here visiting. This one is a little native succulent. strawberries. I don't know if they're woodland strawberries or another type. They've um, just crept all around my garden and make their beautiful little flowers. And we'll make tiny little strawberries that are super delicious. Got some succulents in there. A couple of them are native succulents. Celia in bloom. things over here are gum weed. They will make little yellow daisy-like flowers, but they'll grow into huge bushes, so I had to limit them back. Kinnikinnik. Kinnik. Little native ground cover. Pretty charming. Makes little flowers. Blackberry invasion. Some camas. A young camas that hasn't done much yet. This is a fig tree. It's about three years old. It's probably four feet high. It's not growing fast, but it'll get there. Mm -hmm.